How's it going, fam? It's Erica with Not Your Average GDC, and today we are going to talk about knife grinds, geometry, edges, all that good stuff. This is a video that I had recommended to me by a friend and commenter on the channel. Basically, he wanted me to do a video on different grinds and which one is best for EDC, what they excel at, and what they may not do very well at. So I have four main types of grinds here. We're going to go over the pros and cons. And we're going to do a little bit of um, demonstration work on this piece of cardboard here, okay? So there are so many different types of grinds, but the four main ones in the EDC community, in my opinion, are flat grinds. So that's when you have a completely flat surface right down until the edge. This is just one flat surface, okay? And these are your slicey knives. These are your knives that are gonna move through, especially cardboard, very easily. And the thinner you go with the blade stock, the better they're gonna move through material. But because they're completely flat, they move through very well. Next we have I should say, I, I don't know if I said, this is a full flat grind, okay? This is called a full flat when it's 100% flat from the top all the way down, full flat. Then we have a flat grind. So this is the same as the first one. However, our flat grind does not start at the spine of the knife. It's actually starting right here where you can see. See this line here? So this is a flat grind that's starting up here and comes straight down but it doesn't start at the very top of the knife like a full flat. Very slicey, again, the thinner you go with the blade stock, the better slicing experience you're going to have, but a really good slicer, love those. Next up we have a hollow grind. So this is one in the middle of the blade here, it's kind of like a hollowed out concave surface. So, especially on the Chris Reeve knives, if I can get it to focus, of course we don't want to. On the Chris Reeve knives, technically, as you sharpen this edge and remove material, it's actually going to get thinner as you sharpen, which is really cool. And then obviously eventually you run out of sharpening material and you need a new blade. But basically if you feel this with your fingers, you can feel how it dips in, it hollows out. So hollow grinds are really cool because you can get them pretty thin behind the edge, but you still have a great amount of strength. The only thing with the hollow grinds is that sometimes they don't move through material like cardboard as well, just because we have a little thicker of a material up at the top. So these all have their pros and cons, right? And then, you know, the, the least slicey one out of the lineup is going to be something like an Emerson where you have a V-grind chisel edge. And this has an extremely thick stock, but this literally is the same thickness at the very top as it is down here. And the only time that you start to thin out is on this V-grind bevel that moves into the chisel edge. So there's not a lot of material that's been removed. This is very thick behind the edge, and this is going to be your most uh, robust, strong blade, but it is not going to move through cardboard, for instance, as easily as our full flat grind. So it really depends on what you're going to use your knife for, and that should determine what type of blade you're going for, because if you're looking for a super slicey blade, a full flat grind is going to treat you very well. And if you're looking for something really robust, something that you may use as a multi-tool and maybe a pry bar, this is your best bet, something like an Emerson that is just absolutely robust and completely secured behind the edge with immense strength. So let's just bring some cardboard into the frame here, and we're gonna show how these different blades and different geometries move through the material. So we're gonna start with our 
Spider Co. Para 3, full flat grind. Okay? Okay. So, see how it kind of just went right through? Now, granted, I'm, I'm trying to, like, stay in frame here and uh, manage all of this at once, so it was kind of, like, jagged, but that's because I was trying to, like, you know, stay in the frame here. But basically, went right through, one motion... That's what these types of knives are made for. They're very thin and slicey, and um, cardboard is their best friend. Then we have a flat grind on this Neutron here. Let's see how this moves through. So, still very well, but obviously when you're using this, you can kind of feel the difference between these two because this doesn't have that stop right here, right? So they're a little different. Still good, especially because this knife is running a thinner blade stock than this knife. The Spyderco Pair 3 is actually pretty darn thick. We probably should have brought a Native 5 in instead, but whatever. Now let's see how the hollow grind does on the Sebenza. Come on. Okay, there we go. So see how that took a little more strength? I almost had to, like, catch the edge on the cardboard first and then move it through. That's because although it is very thin behind the edge here with that hollow grind, it really beefs up at the top. And it's almost like a, a swedge, right? It's it, Or a wedge. Um, once you get up here, that's where you start to have some interference because it just gets super thick up here. So these knives are not necessarily the best for cardboard processing. They're, these I have found are really good for like all around tasks, cutting rope, feed bags, processing game. That's kind of more what these types of knives are geared toward. They're a little more, they have a little more strength. Uh, they're not necessarily made for cutting up cardboard all day. And then let's bring our Emerson Mini A100 in with the V grind chisel edge. So, the, the most resistance in terms of the blade geometry, right? Um, this one is just an absolute beast. So this one's going to give you the most trouble moving through cardboard, but it's also going to be your strongest blade. And this is more of a, kind of like a multi-tool as opposed to a good slicing implement. Now, I, I just want to bring this back in real quick for one second. Let's try going through again. It can go through, but it takes a lot of pressure. And notice how it's almost like chipping away the cardboard. That is something that you're going to notice. So if you do a lot of cardboard processing, a knife like this may not be for you. I will say... The theory of these cutting sideways because it's only ground on one side in terms of the edge. I don't really feel that happening too much. Like, I mean, it's taking some effort to, to do it, but I don't feel that I am trying to direct the edge necessarily. So um, a lot of people say that these will kind of start to cut sideways because it's only ground on one side with the edge, but I, I'm really not noticing that. It's more or less just experiencing resistance from how thick this blade is. So this is not one that you want to grab if you are obsessed with cutting cardboard all day and breaking down boxes. This is the last one you would want to choose. But you have ultimate strength. And obviously the best one for the job in terms of slicing is going to be your full flat ground knife. 
the thinner stock you go, the better it's going to move through. Like I said, the pair three is honestly pretty darn thick. So you're kind of seeing that this, um, I still have to put some effort into it because it just, it is so thick, but it's way less effort than the Emerson. Like this is way easier than the Emerson to move through. So hopefully that kind of clears things up for you guys. It's really user preference and what you're using your knives for. Um, I know this is kind of like common knowledge, but I feel like once we start to move into things like hollow grinds, it, it can be a little cloudy. It's kind of like a gray area for some people. They don't know if this is going to be slicey enough for them. And in my opinion, the Sebenza isn't really that slicey when it comes to cardboard. It does food processing pretty well. And I feel that it processes game very well. But if you're just doing cardboard, I, I'm not sure you're going to enjoy this very much, if I'm being honest. Um, it is very slim and elegant, but I, I do feel that this blade stock is honestly kind of thick. I wish that the camera would focus. Come on. It's not going to focus. But I do feel that the Sebenza blade stock is honestly pretty thick. And it, at least for me, I just don't find that it moves through cardboard very easily. Like, this is not a knife that I would choose if I'm doing this all day, breaking down boxes. Like, it just... I don't know. You, you gotta put a little bit of uh, muscle behind this one to get it through. So, yeah. Not the best slicer. Definitely not the best slicer. These are your slicey boys. Full flat grind and flat grind. And man, this uh, blade stock on this TRM is just fantastic. I really like this knife. Uh, even though it's not full flat, I feel like it moves through pre pretty well, really. And it's just so, I don't know. It, it definitely is like one of those geometry cuts knives. We hear that all the time, but that is a real life thing. Geometry does cut because even though this is not full flat and this is, this one is kind of easier to move through because it's so thin. If we had a full flat grind this thin, it would be superior, but because this, this pair of three is so thick, you definitely, in some senses, feel less resistance with the TRM. So yeah, anyway, I hope that clears things up for you guys. Like I said, it really depends on what you're doing with your knives. You're compromising strength when you have thin, slicey, full flat grinds, and you're compromising slicing capabilities when you go thicker and thicker like this. I will see you guys on the next video. Go! Oh, we messed up. There we go. Go use your shit. I love you guys so much, and I will see you so soon. Love you all. Take care.